welcome to Let's Meet a Tyrant. Today our guests include Adolf Hitler, Saddam Hussein, Fidel Castro, and Attila the Hun. Welcome to our first guest, Mr. Attila the Hun! It's great to have you here, Mr. Hun. I've got a couple questions to ask you first, is that alright? Now I'm sure not many of the people in the audience know about your childhood, so I was wondering, did you do well in school as a child? When I was growing up, we did not have any formal education. I learned strategies and military tactics from my father. Really? That's fascinating. So, as a child, did you, uh, did you idolize anyone or look up to somebody in particular? That is an interesting question, Stan. I would have to say I look up to my father as an excellent strategist and a great warrior. I see. Most of the cities of your time were protected by great walls. How was the horde, under your direction, so effective at seizing those cities? Our hordes were quite proficient in siege tactics due to our adaptation of weapons of war, such as catapults, trebuchets, and siege towers stolen from the countries conquered by the Mongol hordes. These were used against the many European cities at the time. One such attack was our year-long siege of Constantinople, where our battering rams broke through their high, thick walls, leading to their ultimate demise. Now, Mr. Hun, who is your favorite enemy to fight, and why did the Horde choose to provoke them to battle with such frequency? Well, Stan, the majority of our campaigns were against the Roman legions. The Romans were the next largest and second most powerful empire in Europe, and were our closest rivals. Their vast number of chariots and mounted warriors closely matched our horde of archers and swordsmen entirely on horseback. They developed many innovative methods to counter our war horses and to fight our archers. Well, that's just swell. So, uh, why are you so hard on your soldiers? I am so hard on my soldiers because fear motivates respect. Respect motivates discipline, and discipline wins battles. Therefore, our horde's superiority is in direct correlation to my iron fist. That's amazing. Now we all know that you once controlled the largest empire today. At its greatest extent, how large was it? Through my many conquests, I was able to expand my empire to include land stretching all the way from the Mediterranean in the west to the Indian Ocean in the east and all the way to the Arctic Circle in the north. This empire was the largest to date in the history of the world. So your great horde was almost entirely made up of horses, and you based almost all of your strategies upon cavalry. I'm curious, what sparked your interest in horses? Our equestrian fetish began with our overwhelming need to move great numbers of troops over vast distances. Cool. With the effectiveness of mounted cavalry implemented by the Romans, we realized the need for such troops. After adapting mounted troops into the horde, we invented the stirrup, which provided our infamous archers a stable platform to fire from, thus making them exponentially more effective. We had the first large-scale fully mounted army in ancient times. I've heard many people refer to you as the Scourge of God. Do you have any comments on this nickname? Well, Stan, I'm not exactly sure why people call me the Scourge of God. I assume it has something to do with the fact that I killed so many people with my divine strength. Now, I know that being a military leader, you must have mastered countless instruments of death and destruction. Of these instruments, which one was your favorite? 
I would have to say that my favorite weapon of all the ones that I have mastered is the longbow because it allows me to dispatch my enemies from a distance. I just uh, figured I'd slip into something more comfortable. Now Attila, I hope it's alright if I call you Attila. If you had to compare yourself to a modern day tyrant, who would it be and why? There is no man alive today that could ever hope to match my military prowess and total control over those subservient to me on the battlefield. Of your many gruesome battles that you fought in, which do you consider your favorite? In my innumerable campaigns as leader of the Mongols, my undoubtedly favorite battle occurred in the city of Carthage. During the fighting outside the city walls, our forces swept down upon the Persian infantry and decimated their superior army, which outnumbered the horde five to one. Our losses did not even exceed 500 men, whereas the Persians lost nearly 3,200 men and horses. Now, it's common knowledge that your men were punished severely for showing fear or weakness on the battlefield. Now, was there ever a time when you yourself displayed fear or weakness in the midst of combat? If so, could you describe it for us? Yes, there was once a time when I feared for my life. In one particular raid, I became separated from the main group and was forced to dispatch around 20 to 30 men on my own. Thank you for your time, Mr. Behind. And coming up after the break, our interview with a man known as Defugo. And remember, folks, tyrants may be slightly misunderstood, power crazy megalomaniacs. They have feelings too.